As a dev, one of the first things I usually installed is Visual Studio Code. When I first started programming, I actually used Sublime Text and then I tried Atom, but then I think a lot of my teams now use Visual Studio Code. So I myself also use Visual Studio Code. And I wouldn't try to even do anything directly from the text edit either or like a notepad because that's just not going to work very well for me. And because of that, my Vim game is very weak, so I wouldn't even bother doing it through Nano or Vim in the terminal directly. But speaking of the terminal, another thing I install right off the start is iTerm2. One of the reasons why I installed iTerm2 is for the multiple Windows capability within it. Because I think in a normal terminal, you have to have a session open every time. But in iTerm, you can have one window and multiple panes inside. You can customize it with Z Shell or Oh My Z Shell. I usually use it to customize the different GitHub branches that I utilize, as well as it's nice to have a bunch of different random colors on an iTerm because I like to feel like I'm in the deep coder mode. For some other non-dev programs I utilize is iStats Menu. That's a paid program and basically it's essentially hardware info, but for your Mac. You can see stuff like your temperature sensors as well as your fan controls, how much CPU you're utilizing as well as GPU you're utilizing too. Now, if you don't wanna pay for that, there's a stats version, which is off of GitHub. I haven't utilized it yet, but I'll drop the link down below. It's essentially the same functionality, but it's a free version instead. You know how you can drag your windows around and attach them to the right hand side or the left hand side of the screen. I used to use spectacles for something similar functionality, but it's more advanced where you can put them in the upper corners, left, right, bottom, right, and anywhere else. So you can even make them in the thirds too. And I used to, like I said, I used to use spectacles, but now that's deprecated. So I now use a rectangle instead. I'll also drop that link down below. It's nice to be able to just customize your desktop layout so you can even have three window panes directly if you're working on simultaneous files at a time. So the total number of cores is eight performance cores and two efficiency cores as well as 32 gigabytes of RAM. So I'm curious how this M1 Pro handles with some gaming on here at least. So that's why I'm installing Steam as well as Blizzard. So I'll be if you are curious, don't forget to give a thumbs up as well as drop a like down below to follow along for the full review to see what it looks like under game conditions. Also, one last thing to, uh, before wrapping up the install portion is I normally use Chrome for work and I use Firefox for personal stuff too. So an extension that's both for Chrome and Firefox is Vim. It's a tool that allows you to navigate around the browser up and down, jump to pages more quickly without utilizing your mouse essentially. So you can go, you can select links. I'll show some quick hotkeys here. Usually it's F to open up all these menus below or open up all the selections that you can have. And you can go up and down the page with J and K, but I'll drop the extension also down below. A couple of features I'm very excited about is the return of the function keys. So uh, I've had my 2019 MacBook Pro and I rarely use that touch bar. So I'm kind of glad to see that go. It was nice when kind of controlling, I think third-party apps, I'd say. I, I think you could you used to be able to skip ads on YouTube from there, from my understanding, but I think they patched that. As well as there might be some custom controls for other apps, like maybe for Photoshop. But I again, I normally just plug in a keyboard and I don't ever use the actual keyboard directly from the laptops. From a design perspective, I do think that touch bar did look nicer, but as far as functionality, I think it was a little bit rough. What would be cool is if they were able to take each function key and kind of give you a little OLED screen, but I know that probably would make it super expensive. So we'll just throw that out the book for now. But it is nice to see that in 2021, they brought back the function rows. So I am ecstatic to be able to just plop this on my lap and be able to use the volume adjustment, you know, raising and lowering the brightness of the screen. Ports, yes, there are ports have returned. No more just purely USB-C. It's nice to have an HDMI input, micro SD card, a couple of USB-C ports. What else do we have here? I mean, audio interface was always a thing for headphones, so that's always nice, but about is the return of MagSafe. That, oh, 
I don't know how many times I've had my MacBook plugged in and I've accidentally kicked the cable and if de it's definitely dragged the laptop with it. I've never broken it, I haven't dropped it, but being able to kind of kick off the charging cable is always pretty nice too. And it's really satisfying to hear that click snap in every so often. Curious how the M1 Pro com coming from Intel and I have myself an AMD chip, right? And the older generation of the MacBooks were all Intel, right? They still sell Intel ones, but having that probably very tightly knitted hardware and software application is probably going to be better for upcoming chips. So I imagine M2s, M3s, and M4s and so on are going to get better, but I'm curious how this very first generation of M1 Pro chips are going to be for both gaming, daily use, as well as a professional setup for both editing as well as coding. And then some features that I'm not too ecstatic about was the notch. Obviously when iPhone 10 came out, they had a notch. So I think them going to a notch, I'm not sure why they went with that here. There's already some quirks I've noticed with the, with the arrow key kind of, or with the arrow disappearing. I think this is something I'll just have to get used to and it'll probably be on the back of my head and just kind of disappear when I don't realize it. One more thing that I'm not too fond of, the actual keyboard itself. I typically don't like to use the keyboards directly from the laptop. I'm going to end up ultimately plugging in my own keyboard and utilizing more. But when I'm testing out this machine, I will utilize the laptop keyboard as much as I can, even though I don't want to. But if you do want to stay and watch more of my content, check out my keyboard review over here. But if you've made it all the way this far, definitely drop a like down below as well as hit the thumbs up. I'll catch you guys in the next review. Peace.